natural organic pigments the alizarin red dye from the madder root carmesic carminic acid from the insect indigo from the plant leaves saffron giving crocetin beta carotene get the orange dye from the caps also some inorganic dyes the chlorophyll as a pigment copper thiocyanin blue and some anthocyanins however natural dyes have many limitations the basic uh, problem to collect enough raw material then to process the raw material for extraction itself is time consuming and also it is very laborious cost since a large quantity of raw material is involved to bring about extraction and then only a little or the same pin or the same dye is obtained this comes up to be very really expensive as well and it doesn't have good permanency also these dyes there is difficulty in application it washes out easily there is lack of purity and also uniformity and colors are limited the so possibilities of colors also are limited so you have limited applicability the first synthetic dye was a cerium actually it in 1856 18 year old william henry pocket on his easter vacation in the london school royal college of chemistry during his vacation he synthesized more or aniline purple which was the first synthetic dye stuff from chemicals derived from coal tar he was working actually to produce a different product quinine which is an anti malarial drug and then it was obtained from the bark of the plant sinsona tree sinsona okay and its first product was earlier sold as tarin purple till 59 when it came to be known as mo okay 56 it was synthesized and then 58 59 <coughs> this is the structure of mo Perkin having synthesized this dye introduced chemists to the possibilities of then synthesizing dyes in the lab itself. Earlier it was only from the from the natural sources. So then chemists did not have to look for natural sources for dyes. This was the start of the creation of synthetic dyes in the lab. Theories of dyes. Okay. The first theory proposed by Otto and Witt. In 1856, was popularly known as the Witt. Is popularly known as the Witt theory. It was noticed by Witt that color in organic compounds is associated with the presence of certain groups in the molecule. He designated a group that produces color as a chromophore. Chroma means means color, porous means to wear, and the molecule containing such a group is known as the chromatin. These are some examples of the chromophores. The nitroso, nitro, aso, and these are chromatids, <coughs> molecules having chromatids. Certain other unsaturated groups produce color only when several of them are present in a molecule, and when these are conjugated. Okay, you can see this example of the tomato red color in tomato due to lycopene, which has eleven. Uns eleven double bonds in conjugation. Okay, so conjugation of unsaturated groups brings about color in certain molecules. If you see acetone over here, it has the same chromophore as it has producing in on all these examples. The chromophore used is is uh, involved is the carbonyl. In acetone, acetone appears colorless. It is isolated chromophore present over there. In this case, both the chromophores, the carbonyl chromophores, are present, but they are not in conjugation. Acetyl acetone is also colorless, whereas biacetyl, it is having the carbonyls in conjugation and it is yellow color. But also notice that 
certain groups which by themselves cannot produce color, but they have the ability to intensify the color when present in a molecule along with the group. These are known as oxocores. Oxen means to increase and chroma means to color. Some effective oxocores are hydroxy and primary, secondary, and tertiary amino groups. The chromophores, as you see the examples over here, these are all unsaturated groups. Oxochromes are the saturated groups. Okay? A chromophore in a molecule causing color is known as chromogen. The molecule is known as chromogen. Okay? Oxochrome by itself has no oxochrome in a molecule doesn't produce color. You can see this example. of phenol having the hydroxyl oxochrome being colorless <coughs> nitrobenzene having a chromophore adding color giving color to the producing molecule yellow color is the chromogen Whereas, if you have paramicrophenol, this is dark yellow color. Okay? So, an oxochrome along with the chromophore in the molecule intensifies the color. Okay? This is the molecule. This molecule over here, you see different oxoforms and chromoforms. Nitro, the rings over here, benzene rings, along with the exoforms over here, are the chromoforms, and the oxoforms are the chloride and the substituted amino. amino. Okay. So, on addition or removal of moves, absorption of light can change its wavelength. The wavelength of light absorbed can change. If wavelength of light increases, absorption rate increases, then such an effect is known as the pathochromic shift. So, adding and removal of groups can change the wavelength of light absorbed, and hence the color scheme can be different. You can see the example of here of. Nitrobenzene, and if it is having the amino group also, the color of nitrobenzene yellow and amino uh, paramicroanemone is different. Here, this is your orange yellow color. Okay, so the color is dark. Yeah, so absorption of light is in the higher wave. Okay? Higher wave light is absorbed. Similarly, if you have a different group, paramicro acid and light over here, this molecule. Okay? In this case, the color is pale yellow. Okay? So, among these two, you see the pathogenic production, and over here you see the hypsoposition or the blue shift. Okay? If you see the graph of wavelength of intensity, as the wavelength increases, as the wavelength of light absorbed increases, such a shift is known as the pathochromic shift. The red shift. Okay? If the wavelength of light absorbed decreases, that is known as the 
que é psofrômetros. On the blue shirt. I don't have a blue one. So, that is a blue shirt. If the intensity of color increases on introduction of blue, such an effect is known as a hypochromic effect of shift. Okay, intensity increases. And if the intensity decreases, that is your hypochromic shift. Okay, so introduction of different groups can influence the absorbed light, the given of absorbed light and thereby change the colors. Yeah. The Armstrong theory. In 1885, Armstrong suggested that all colored matters may be represented by quinoid structures, para or ortho. If a particular compound can be formulated in a quinoid form, then it is colored. Otherwise, it is colorless. We see this example over here where you have parabenzoquinone. In the quinoid form, you have the yellow color. Whereas in the hydroquinone form, it appears colors. Similarly, benzoquinone or tho is red in color and in the catechol form, it is colors. Okay? So this theory can explain color in certain molecules, but it has serious limitations. This theory is not versatile. We see certain molecules like immunoquinone and diaminoquinone, although having the quinoid structure, they appear colors. Okay? Whereas biacetyl, although it doesn't have a quinoid structure, it is yellow. Okay? So these are the limitations of the Armstrong theory. The modern theories of color. Okay, so far what we studied were the groups present in the molecule which give rise to color in the molecules. Now, to study the molecular theories of color, what is needed is an understanding of the interaction of light with color, with matter. The sensation of color is produced when light having a wavelength within the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum strikes the retina of the eye. We see over here the wavelength increasing and energy decrease. Okay? Color and absorption of light. When light passes through a matter, a part of it may absorb. When white light in the range of 750 to 400 nanometers falls on a substance, the light will be totally reflected or totally absorbed. In the former case, when it is totally reflected, the substance will appear white and it is totally absorbed, the substance appears black. If only a single band is absorbed, then the substance has a complementary color of the absorbed band. So, if you have white color being absorbed, you will visualize yellow color. The same concept is explained over here, demonstrated over here in the form of the color field, where wavelengths of light absorbed have complementary wavelengths of light reflected or visualized. So if you have white color of wavelength 400 to 420 nanometers being absorbed, the color you see is going to be yellow in the wavelength of 560 to 580 nanometers. For this reason, when plants absorb light of wavelength 650 to 750 nanometers, they appear green. The theories of electronic energy levels and their transitions. Okay. There are two such theories, the balance point theory and the molecular organic theory. Let us first look at the balance point theory. We look at the simplest molecule, ethylene, which is called a pi Okay. Now, the orbital diagram of each carbon atom is represented over here, and we see the hybrid orbitals. 1s orbital is used, 2s orbitals are used for the carbon hydrogen bond with the overlap with the uh, oneness of the hydrogen 
Then one of the carbon-carbon bonds is a sigma bond which is formed by the overlap of the carbon-carbon sp2 bond using uh, vitals. But there remains one more bond to be explained. Between carbon-carbon there are two bonds. One bond is a sigma bond. Two carbon-hydrogen bonds are sigma bonds. One bond over here of this particular one, one carbon that needs to be explained. What is that? This unpaired electron in the unlikewise orbitals is involved in the overlap of the unlikewise P orbital of the other carbon, having a overlap, lateral overlap. So you have the overlap side to side and not end to end as you see in sigma bonds. delocalized pi bonds. In a structure with alternating double bonds, cyclic or linear, there is a more universal sharing of electrons in the pi bond. These are the lateral overlap. The electrons in the sigma bonds are still localized between pairs of carbon atoms, but the electrons in the pi bonds can actually be shared throughout the length of the alternating double bond pi. These delocalized electrons give the molecule special stability. You can see this molecule of benzene where you have a sigma framework, bonds formed between carbon hydrogen and carbon carbon, leading to a planar sigma framework. The unhydrized P orbitals, which are perpendicular to this plane, then overlap laterally to form clouds of pi density, pi density above and below the beta structure. Color and valence bond theory. Color can be explained according to valence bond theory based on different factors such as electronic excitation of electrons, conjugation, resonance, and dipole moment. The electronic excitation of molecules. When the electrons are transferred from the ground state to the excited state, an absorption of wavelength, a visible wavelength missing, um, light is taken up. And on absorption of visible light, the electrons are transferred from ground state to higher state, excited states. This difference in energy levels is given by delta E equal to H nu equal to Hc by lambda. Okay? Then, conjugation. If a molecule has conjugation, excitation is easier as it lowers the energy of excitation. You can see in beta carotene, with number of number the same, double bonds conjugated, we have a better color. <coughs> excitation is much easier in such cases, where you have conjugation of so many double bonds. Resonance, by which number of charged and uncharged structures can be written, which have same position of atoms, but differ in the positions of electrons. The requirements of resonance are conjugation and planarity. Dipole moment. A molecule can absorb light only when dipole moment changes, resulting in a transition dipole. The transition dipole depends on the symmetry of the molecule. We should take some examples to study these effects based on the factors mentioned now. If you consider benzene, nitrobenzene, paranitroalumine, Benzene is colorless, nitrobenzene has pale yellow color, and paranitrobenzene has dark yellow color. Now, in this case, benzene is a symmetrical molecule, has no dipole moment, whereas nitrobenzene has charged resonating structures, and paranitrobenzene uh, and aline has got still many more structures as compared to nitrobenzene. So, there is more charge distribution. Dipole moments of nitrobenzene and paranitrobenzene are very different. Okay. You have a higher dipole value of 6.2 for paranitrogenine and 4.1 for nitrogenine. Okay, so the color can be placed on these factors. Then, as well as with the change in the um, medium, okay, we protonate this particular acid, methyl orange, that the uh, electron deficiency is delocalized by spreading of the pi. This lone pair of electron 
is delocalized and then you have better color over here, darker color over here, red as compared to yellow in the acidic medium. You change it to alkaline medium, it reverts back to yellow color. Triphenyl methane dyes, two examples we shall consider the melchite green and the crystal white. In melchite green, you have two substituents, uh, three rings, and both, uh, two of these rings have got the substitute and then dye it. Whereas in crystal violet, all the three rings, they have got the substituent, the same substituent, and then dye it. In case of melatonin green, we see that the molecule is unsymmetrical, it has got two axes of polarizability and it absorbs in two peaks, absorption is in two peaks, and it absorbs at a longer rate as compared to <coughs> crystal violet. Okay, this is at a shorter rate. So the color is more over here. At the same time, the positive charge on color is uh, of, uh, at a longer wavelength in case of melatonin green. Also, the magnitude of positive charge on the nitrogens over here, it is on two nitrogens, okay, on two rings, whereas over here it is distributed on three nitrogens in the ring. So, the magnitude of positive charge on nitrogen atoms is much more in melatonin green, which makes the color deeper as compared to crystal violet, where the color distribution is spread over three nitrogens. Yeah. Results. We can look at the examples of parametrophenone and parametrophenone to know how resonating structures affect in terms of what? More the resonating structures, more is the color. Structures are possible for benzophenone, parabenzophenone, which has charge separation and this helps to create color. In case of anthraphenones, besides the quinone ring, you also have two other benzene rings over which the charge will be distributed. So it will be having still more color. It will be absorption will be in a higher frequency in the new type. Absorption of higher than it is absorbed by the fiber. We said that resonance is a conjugated to say is a dependent on planarity and conjugation. Okay? As an example for studying planarity in a molecule, we shall say So molecule two two tiny tiny four hydroxy. Molecule can exist in the cis and 
transform. In the cis form, if you consider the azo bond, in the cis form, both the rings will be on the same side and this molecule will be highly unstable. So it adapts a non planar structure. When it has a non planar structure, then resonance will be inhibited. There will be no resonance. Such a molecule then appears, the cis isomer then appears convex. Whereas in the trans form, these two rings will be on the opposite side of the azo bond. Okay, and that will be a planar molecule which shows the color. Okay, so conjugation and planarity are the two factors which will decide if resonance takes place and thereby affect the color. The molecular or The valence bond theory treats a bond between two atoms as an overlap of orbitals from two atoms. Okay. In other words, one uh, on an hydrogen oneness orbital overlaps with a chlorine three p orbital to form a bond in HCl when we consider HCl as the molecule that is formed. Another way to look at this bonding is when the molecule HCl can be treated as a single entity with its own orbitals. Since the orbitals will belong to HCl, they could now be known as the molecular orbitals. A molecular orbital is just like the atomic orbital and these are symbolized by sigma and pi. You can see two atomic orbitals of hydrogen coming together to form the bonding and antibonding orbitals. So these are the molecular orbitals. The molecular orbitals come from the mixing of two atomic orbitals and the two orbitals mix to form one bonding and one antibonding orbital. This could be sigma or pi as bonding and sigma star and pi star as more unknown. You see the molecular structure over here, orbital structure over here. The molecules absorb visible or UV light to promote an electron from the highest occupied molecular orbital to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. The wavelength of light absorbed is inversely proportion, proportional to the energy difference between these two orbitals. And it is given by E is equal to Xc by lambda. If this gap is smaller, then you have lower energy of light required. If energy required is low, then you will have higher lambda wavelength of light absorbed. Yeah. There are different energy levels of molecular orbitals sigma bonding, sigma antibonding, sigma star, pi, pi star, and n, the non bonding molecular orbitals. And different types of electronic excitations are possible. The n pi star, the pi pi star, and sigma sigma star are the allowed transitions. Sigma bonds, electron electrons are tightly held. So high energy is necessary to promote these electrons. If high energy is required, then we have light of low or short wavelength being absorbed. Okay, which will not be seen by us. So you have saturated molecules where you have sigma bonds in case of earlier sigma aliphatic hydrocarbons or sigma sigma bonds which will require high energy and then absorbing at low short wavelengths having no color. Pi bond electrons are less tightly held and require less energy. We saw that how pi electrons are relocalized so they will involve they will require less energy. And if they are in conjugated systems, they will require even less energy. So conjugation and aromaticity, they help to stabilize the excited state by sharing and delocalizing the higher energy of the excited electron. As conjugation increases, the wavelength of light absorbed increases because energy involved requires less. When wavelengths are long enough, the absorption is in the visible region. And for us to see, for a substance to have color, 
it must absorb between 400 to 700 nanometer region of the electromagnetic spectrum. These are some chromophores and molecules. If you see the molecules over here where we have sigma sigma star transitions, these are the wavelength of light absorbed, which are not visible to us. Okay? If you see the pi pi star, they are still a little higher comparatively, but the n pi star transitions, they have higher wavelengths in them. This is an example of vitamin A, beta carotene, and like vitamin A. It has five conjugate double bonds and the main color absorbed is by it, but what we see is the yellow color as we saw the complementary colors. Okay, beta carotene and lycopene. We have 11 bonds over here, but the colors over here are different. Okay, as you see in this molecules over here, beta carotene has 11 bonds of which 2 bonds of conjugation are in a cyclic system over here. Whereas over here they are all together a little like form and also there are 2 more double bonds which are not involved in conjugation. So they don't contribute to the color. So both places 11 bonds but the colors observed are different. Okay. A particle box is a famous model based on quantum mechanics okay. and this explains the laws. If you see an electron in a box, it is treated as a particle in a box and then it has potential energy zero but it is within the molecule, within the box and if it is outside the box, it is having infinite potential energy. The energy of this electron can be obtained by this formula where E is equal to n squared x squared upon 8 m l squared, where m is an integer one of us, m is the mass of the electron, and l is the length of the box. Applying this to a molecule, we see that the length of the molecule over here m is 8 angstroms. Substituting that and substituting the n values as 2 and 1, we obtain the value of energy in joules as this. And converting that the work awaited using the equation P is equal to Fc by lambda, we see that the wavelength of this, this wavelength, 700 nanometer wavelength of light is absorbed by such a molecule. So, this is how colors are seen. Now, structure and properties of dyes related to applications. Dyes can be used in various ways on various substances, substrates. Is first see the textile types. Depending on the application, the properties are different for different types. Textile dyes need to be attractive. They should have strong affinity for the textile fibers, so for substantiality. Then solubility should be proper. Fastness properties. They should be able to withstand various factors such as light, motion, perspiration, heat, rubbing, etc. Okay? And they should be also economically viable. In large industries, when we require a large amount of introducing dyes to color clothes, if the raw materials are expensive, everything. so we have to choose ways where we can minimize the cost in one. Metal complex dyes. The features would be to have medium fasting, uh, washing fastness, excellent light fastness, they should show very good level of dyeing and penetration characteristics and they can, should be able to cover up the irregularities in the substance. Okay? These are some of the metal dyes. <coughs> food colors. <coughs> These are generally used to make food more attractive and appetizing and to impart information. You see symbols, the colors on food packets in restaurant menus, etc. Red denoting what? Not. Green. Energy. So you immediately can know what it is, so you can give that information right away. It also allows consumers to identify products on site like candy flavors on medicine dosages. They should be stable to heat and light. When you are cooking, they should not get altered. They should not alter the taste of the food also or the flavor of the food. 
they should be safe and not toxic. It's going to be consumed by us mostly. And then no reaction with other ingredients. Okay? Nice for diet products. Fish having fastness towards perspiration. They should be having fastness towards rubbing in water and also stability of dyes with regard to the acid, alkali, and hard water make them suitable for use in the river. One cannot assume that to dye any substrate, all one needs to use is a dye of that particular color. We just saw the different features involved in dyes. No single dye will dye all substrates satisfactorily. You cannot use a layer dye to, for the metal and you cannot use it other way also. So each substrate has a different. One has to choose a dye that will suit the substrate or choose a substrate that will suit the dye. There are various kinds of dyes used based on different applications. The different properties desired are dependent on the chemical constitution and structure of dyes. Functional dyes. Dyes and pigments are no longer used only for coloration. Okay? You have novel dyes made for specific applications. The chemical or photochemical activity of such dyes forms the basis of many of their innovative uses. You have some examples over here for its use in biomedical and biochemical, as tagging and imaging, military uses for iron or metal camouflage, security, security printing, dye lasers, color display devices, the organic uh, dye sensitized solar cells. So these are the various application, novel applications based on the structure, the dark side of colors. Okay? We only use colors to make ourselves attractive, to make the substance attractive generally. But behind that, there are many puzzles involved for people who manufacture it, people who use it, and also the environment is affected. You have the occupational hazards where Dyes use raw materials which itself are not safe. So the exposure to the people who are working to prepare the dyes is maximum. They are handling those raw materials, the finished product, and are being affected. So safe choices have to be made for that. Then environmental hazards. While they are using these raw materials and dyes, they are also emitting vapors. They are passed on to the environment to the waters, to the soil, water bodies, soil, etc. affecting the environment. And when we are using it as consumers, we are also in a way getting affected. Any prolonged use, as well as they decompose. Okay, so even when you are using colors, tying our fabric, we are using that. Or when we are consuming some products which have colors, those could affect us. Anyway. So, this has to be taken care of by using treatment methods. There are different treatment methods, the physical treatment methods, the chemical treatment methods, and the biological treatment methods. In the physical, you have the absorption, irradiation, membrane processes. In the chemical treatment, you have the oxidative processes, coagulation, population, and precipitation, electro-coagulation, ionic ex uh, exchange, and in the biological, you have the aerobic and anaerobic degradation. So using these, recent uh, research work shows that Waste product of one particular industry can also be agriculture waste. Okay, is now being used as absorbent to absorb the dyes, dye color from the water bodies, etc. It's proving to be successful. So, a waste product of one industry treating the waste product of another industry. So, suitable strategies have to be employed and then use like the new stuff. Dyes not only make the world around us colorful but also have significant applications as we saw with the functional dyes and provided they are used with discretion. 